Hey guys, Sapo here. We're looking at our brand new VST instrument, which is called Batbow. We're looking at how you can build up a drum and bass groove, custom kits, we're looking at drum and bass techniques. So we're looking at resampling, layering. We're looking at the deeper workings of the workflow. We're looking at effects, the resync, decompose. Much to discuss, much to show, very, very cool. Let's go. So here we are in Cubase, we have a drum and bass track here that I'm working on and I want to get the elements fat or I'm going to use Backbone. So here's Backbone and Backbone is going to be key to getting this big sound that I want of all the layers that make up the drum and bass track. So we have a kick on Backbone, we have a snare, we have a sheen, we have a ride and we have some breaks running as well. So let's concentrate on the meat and bones of what most drum and bass uh, is, which is the kicks, the snares, the rides, sheen, hi-hats, those elements. So let's open up Backbone. And here is our kick. And we have C3 on Backbone here. If you want to audition a sample, there's a nice handy button here ready to play at the range we want, which is C3. Or oh, we have our keyboard as well, which is cool. So let's start with the kick. I have a rough kick pattern in Cubase. Let's have a quick listen. Now it's all right, that kick is not too bad. It needs to be fat or it needs more depth. I need to do more to it. So normally we would EQ and maybe stack some layers of other samples as audio channels, and then maybe bounce them down and stuff like that. The really cool, powerful thing about Backbone is I can do all this within the one at VST or within Backbone. So I can actually deconstruct and reconstruct samples on the fly. So let's have a look at that. So here's a kick channel. A uh, handy little tip here is if I open the edit channel and then just sort of like squeeze that into the Cubase ecosystem, then I can actually see what's going on and what's being affected by what I'm actually doing. So first things first, we have this decompose section at the top, which is really powerful, really amazing. It means that I can literally take a sample apart uh, by its tonal or noise, noise layers. I can sum them together. So I can actually really take out of something like a kick, for instance, I can take maybe the noise elements out of it and maybe clean it up. I can maybe even make it fat or add more depth and bring more out of it. So it's really, really powerful. So let's have a listen. Here's the kick. And you can hear there's quite a bit of noise in there. And I kind of don't want that noise. It's all right, some of it, but I need more depth and less noise. This is amazing for this. So I click on pre-listen mode and now I can click on S for solo of the noise or I can say S for solo on the tonal. Now I can actually work out what I need to take away. So I want to take less noise away. So let's solo the noise and let's audition the noise. And as you can see there, even on the graphic, you can see I'm taking the noise out. I just want to leave a little bit in there, but I want more depth from the kick. So that'll be the tonal layer. Solo the tonal layer. And with the dial, you can hear straight away. The depth is really coming into that now. And if you look on the graphic here, you can see like the meat of that kick around 100 to 200, which is not too bad. Really starts to come to life there. So I can undo solo and now I can listen to them both in context before I actually commit to what I'm doing. Just to make sure. So something like that's pretty cool. Less noise, more tonal. So I've actually got more kick, more sort of depth there. If I take off pre-listen and have a listen to that, that's uh, without, and that's with, that's much better. So now there's more depth and uh, more fatness to that kick. And with it being backbone, we have full undo and uh, redo capabilities. So it's great. So even if you commit, you're not quite sure, you needed more tweaks, you can go back in and out and redo and uh, undo. So that's really powerful. So I'm happy with that. I'm gonna commit by pressing apply. Now I'm applying this decompose and now it's in two sections. So I have separate solo of the tonal, and separate control of the noise. So I can also just maybe just mute the noise and just have the kick now. So that's really cool. Another quick tip to show you is if I undo that and then step back in time, we can also choose to have this mix knob activated. So that'll sum it down into one sample. So it's almost like a resample. What that will do is that will just take the tonal and the noise and put them into one sample. So that's great for, you know, we have eight slots here, so you can maybe keep summing and resampling. So there's, there's options are quite limitless where you go with that. For instance, I'm happy with the kick, what we did before. I'm just gonna leave the mix knob on now and apply that. So I'm gonna commit with the mix knob. And there you go, you see it there, and you see the sample size. If I click out of here, you can actually see an undo and redo. You can actually see what it's doing to the sample. And that's what we want in drum bass. We want a bit more fatness, a bit more kick. And now I have seven slots left. 
you know, these are eight slots in Backbone. So because in drum and bass we do a lot of resampling, we can keep going with this. And it's up to you where you go. Obviously, like any genre of music, you can overdo it. But the fact that we have the capabilities and the options and the power to do all this in one instrument is really, really cool. So I'm happy with the kick. I'm going to roll with it as I've just done there by summing it down, taking less noise out, putting more tonal in, a bit more beef, and that's good to go. Another cool thing I can do is I can go into the resynth. So the resynth is like a spectral synthesizer. You know, it's more than subtractive synthesis. You can do so much to the sounds. You can really transform the sounds in the resynth. The resynth is really powerful for twisting and transforming your sound. So it's great for that. I'm going to turn it on. And this is what I like to do with this. There's a purity up here. So because it's a kick, there's not much to do in this kick that we would do in, say, for instance, maybe some harmonic content like uh, rides or snares or something. But there's some great stuff we can do in here. So we have the resynthesizer, and we'll look into that a little bit later on. And then we also have a spectral filter where we can actually analyze sounds as well. So then we can maybe pat that off and then add nodes and then really sculpt the sound. So we're not going to use that right now. We can come back to that later. So all I want to do is just add some harmonics to that kick. So I'm gonna to go to the purity meter. So the more you turn the purity up, the more pure the sound will be. In reverse, obviously it'll be impure and you get more harmonic. So have a listen to this. So what I want to do is add a little bit of something, you know, a bit of grit to it. And here's without it. Here's with the resynth. And that's just me using the purity. If I use the position meter, Obviously, it's a quite short sample, but you'll see later on that we can really get some cool stuff out of that. So, halfway the kick, let's play that. Really happy with that. Now we're going to go to the snare. So here's the snare. And that's not bad, it's like a nice dynamic snare, but it's not doing kind of the fatness that I want. I want to get more out of it. So again, first port of call, I'm going to go to decompose. I'm going to go to pre-listen. I'm going to see what more I can get out of this snare. So there you go. The tonal brings me more body to it. And you can look on the analyzer, you can see that. So it's here, it's around 230, 240. That's great for a drum and bass snare. We want that to cut through the mix. And with one dial, I can literally cut through the mix so it's really you know i'm not even eqing this this is great power and i'm not even committing because i'm only pre-listening to this so i have full control over uh how far i go with this so i'm really happy with that but now i want to more have more of the ringing options out of it more of the brightness and this is where the noise layer comes in And that's exactly what I want. So I'm going to apply. And now we have it split up. So there's our, it's called serve break. So serve break tonal, serve break noise. I have a layer already muted here because we might come back to that later on. So I can solo the noise and the tonal. So that's great now. So that means I have now full control over the layers. And with drum bass, you kind of want to do that. We want to stack different layers and different sounds, maybe a high, uh, a high mid snare, a low mid snare, and then a real top end sheen to that. This is what Backbone's amazing for. We have eight slots, so we can actually really reconstruct our snare how we want it to be, and have full control over every single uh, layer of it. So that's really cool. So in the tonal, I'm gonna add some distortion. So I'm gonna go to the bit reduction. I'm gonna solo it. So I'm going to turn the cutoff back slightly to about 4K, and then I'm going to turn the distortion up. Just to give me that kind of grit that we have, you know, a sort of electronic sound that drum and bass has. And I'm going to take a mute the noise layer off. Really happy with that. The third layer is a clap. So the clap is literally just in there to just add some uh, bite and some depth and some clarity. It's a really clear clap. So let's have a listen to that as well. And I have full control over the levels 
with the green section, which is amplitude. We also had width as well, so we can actually add on a stereo sample, add some width just to the top end if you want to. Maybe one of the layers, uh, leave the tone all alone, maybe add the noise a bit wider. It's up to you where you go with that. So I'm really happy with that. A nice uh, gelled set of snares and claps together, and that's only three. If I really want to go deep and really gel these sounds and get them all in depth, I can go into this. If I want to go deep into sound design, I can really do that. I can click on, um, for instance, the sample. So we have all the sections. We have a sample section, the resynth, pitch. We have even full control of the filters and the amplitude. So I can go into the sample. So we even have high pass and low pass here. If you want to choose to really sculpt to the sounds, obviously we can solo and mute, and then we can clear the solos and clear the mutes if we want to. So for instance, in this clap, a really cool thing is with the layers, if I wanted to, I could tune them together. So in here we have a really cool option to tune things. So the cool thing about Backbone is under here you can see pitch analysis. So here's my tonal layer. I can then say, okay, give me some pitch analysis. So what that will do is give me a full analysis of the pitch of the tonal sample. So I can then say, okay, give me the most stable part of that pitch. So it's like D1. I can highlight that. I can then say, okay, let's refresh it now, the analyzation. And then I can say, let's transfer that to the root key and it'll go to D1. So I actually analyzed it, I've refreshed it, and I've changed it to the root key. Now I can change it back to my range key, which is C3. I'm playing everything around the C3 range. And this is how you will tune all your samples together. It's a really powerful feature again, and I'm only in one window here. We've got so many other windows that we can really tweak each layer, each sound, all them all together. So it's really powerful. So I'm happy with that. Okay, so I'm just gonna add some width here on the amplitude section. There, you can hear that just gonna ring out the clap a bit more. So without, and with. So that's fine. And of course we have a built-in limiter, which is great, handy feature. We can bypass it as well. It just keeps everything in check if you're using multiple layers. Because remember we have eight slots here and things might get a little bit stacked. It's a preference thing because we also have the effect slots as well, which we'll look into a little bit later on. So I'm really happy with how all these sit together. So let's have a listen. So all I want to change now is literally the noise layer. It sounds all right, it fits in quite well, but I think it needs a little something. So a little bite, a little bit of character. Now let's look at the effects. So if I come up here and I say the effects slot, I just click on it. This is our effects slot. So we have effects we can have in serial or parallel. FX2 is our master slot chain. So these are the main effects that will affect the whole program. So we can actually choose to maybe stack and have our own chain. So like Cubase, we can actually stack the chains together, you know, a compressor into an EQ, and then maybe a reverb, and then maybe a limiter. FX1 is our auxiliary. So we can actually say, okay, I'm going to move it to auxiliary one here, which will be the, in the amplitude section. And that means I can just I maybe merge FX1 and 2. So maybe some sort of parallel compression, for instance, or I can solely have auxiliary one being activated. So which will in turn affect FX1's sections, which is great. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a bit crusher. So distortion, bit crusher, I love this effect. So of course it does what it says, but it's got a really nice algorithm to it. So let's just control this noise and add some grit and bite to it. I'm gonna turn the input gain up. I'm gonna turn the rate reduction down on both the rate and the bit. And that's exactly what I wanted. And I can do this to taste because we have a mix knob. So I can actually do parallel processing with it, which is great. So let's try that. So I'm really happy with that. And now I can look at maybe adding some sort of sheen to this. So adding some gloss, some pace, some dynamics to the kick and snare, because that's what you want it to do. You want to fill in the gaps where the kicks and snares are having the gaps and add some movement. And this is where I would add sheen. So in Cubase, this is what I've done. I've added a bit of sheen as a MIDI sort of pattern and it's quite raw. So it could do with some processing. Let's have a listen. So 
So it's not bad, but it needs more. It's meant to be a bit raw and a bit have some movement and a bit unnatural. You want it to have something, a bit of life in there. Not too static, not too rigid. So first things first is if I hold the alt key and I solo this again. If I hold the alt key and drag down, I duplicate the slots. So instantly I get two. So now it's much better. So now we get almost like a doubling up of thickness of things. So this is a quick and easy way to stack and layer samples. Remember, we have eight slots. So the really cool and powerful thing, again, about Backbone, can't say enough, is the resampling option is amazing. So with the arrow here, I can drag it to Cubase, and that will do me a bounce or a sum of whatever's in the uh, slots. So this is the direct output of Backbone, which I can then bounce out. Easy resampling, I can come back in if I choose to. Or from Backbone, I can just drag it and resample it to a slot or a fresh slot or over the first slot like this. So now I have two sheens on top of another one. So there's three technically. Let's have a listen. And of course we have full undo and redo capability. So I can just check what it sounds like before I did that. And you get to see, obviously, the sample, it starts to get bigger, obviously, because we're summing samples and resampling. This is great, especially for drum bass. All drummers as well, it's applicable too, but drum bass, we always resampling, we're always layering, and the options are limitless. Obviously, you have to use your ears as well, you don't want to go too mad with it. And literally, I've just added three sheens there with not much processing, and you can see the difference it makes. You know, much fatter, much bigger, and obviously I can then choose to have a look at it. Yes, it's a stereo sample, so now I can go back and add some width if I choose to, maybe on just this layer. Just to add a little bit something extra to it. So the first one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of the lows off. I'm just going to double check it. And there's tiny lows in there, that's fine. Let's just go to a high pass and roll some off. It's just slight cleaning up. And remember, you can do that also in the sample edit window. We have a high pass and low pass, really convenient. But obviously, if you want more control, you have to use the filters because we obviously we can go to 24 there and we have full control of a resonance as well. So it's really good to clean up the sounds and to get the sheen in this instance how we want it. So now we can look at global processing. So we looked at the effects before with FX1, FX2. So I might want to just slightly mess around with this now. So on one layer, I'm only going to affect that. So I might want to add some space to that. So back to the effects. Now, if I wanted to globally control these, I could say, okay, let's go to dynamics and a compressor, and then I can literally like that, really control and gel the elements. Obviously, if I've been resampling loads and re-importing, and I have all my slots filled, they will need controlling, so the compressor is great for that. And obviously, we can stack up loads of effects, and that's great. But in this instance, I'm going to use the compressor just to slightly control things. Just so the threshold is literally just picking off the top peaks, and it's all in check. Obviously, when we run the kick and snare together, we want them to work. The second layer here, number two, I'm going to actually use an auxiliary. I'm going to add some reverb to that. So let's turn that on. And that's just to add some some life to the other layer and it adds more space it adds more room it also means that i don't have to put as many dynamic sounds into uh, this track so i don't have to add loads of different layers of breaks and percussion and elements it means i can take up more room have more space for maybe vocals for instance or effects or sweeps and sounds you don't want to clutter your mix up you want clean mixes with drum bass the less you have in there the more you can mix down and get more headroom the more you can get a bigger master when it comes to the mastering stage so it's good to be sort of tidy so to speak and i've your elements cleaned up as well so that's what the filter is great for in backbone obviously you don't have full control of the knobs here you can actually click on it and you can also create you know breakpoints and a full control 
over where you need to be, which is great. And we can also auto scale things as well. So it's really powerful for what you need to do. I'm going to undo what I did there because I don't want to mess what I've just been working on. Uh, and let's go back to the actual kick snare and sheen. So I'm really happy with that. It's got a really nice sort of funky sound. It sounded nothing like that before. And Backbone has added the real critical processing that I needed. And obviously I can keep going back in. We have full undo redo capabilities like we said before. So I can always change things and tweak things. And it's it's a matter of preference. It's a matter of taste. Remember you have eight slots here, but that's technically unlimited because you can keep re-importing back in if you choose to. Bounce back out again and again and stack. And yeah, it's up to you guys where you go with that. So now I'm going to go to the rides. So the rides will be just that little bit of extra element percussion wise. And I'm going to solo it just so you can hear what they are so far. So that's really cool, simple ride. I just want it to have a bit more. As you can see, I've got two here that I've been working on and they're doubled up now, so that's quite good. As I was working on it before in Backbone. So, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the resynth. So now we can have real fun in the resynth by activating it and really messing with the sound. So I'm gonna solo it, just one layer that I'm gonna be working on and leave the other layer kind of flat and doing what it originally did. As you can see in the filter, we have a spectral filter here, which we can actually see what the sound's doing. So like before, when we can see in the analyzer, this is really helpful that it's been added here. It's great because we can actually really see where some uh, low end energy might be taken up, where frequencies are really going to be hitting and peaking. And with it being a spectral filter, we can actually really get in there and sculpt out what we do and don't want. So we can double click and add our nodes like this. So now I can take all that bottom end energy out, which will really affect a mix later on. So you can really sculpt things and get them how you want to really clean up frequencies, which is great. It's really powerful, a really powerful tool, but we're not looking at that right now. We're actually looking at this now, this section. So we're looking at purity, we're looking at position, we're looking at formant. So let's get that on now. So the position I can actually choose where the starting position is within this sample. I can also choose to add performance to that as well. So if it's in reverse, I can kind of get a metallic sound. And remember, I still have my second layer with the original sound. So what I'm kind of doing here is parallel processing with the recent, which is great. So what I can do there is then really start to mangle things with the purity knob. So I'm actually making it more impure with, uh, with some slight formants and changing the position of where it's actually creating that. So yeah, so now I have this layer, which has then added some impurities. I've changed the position markers and I've added some slight formants. So this can go really deep. The purity can be affected by velocity. So harder, I, softer I press the keys, the, the less or more pure it gets. So it's really cool that you can go in there and do this kind of synthesis on any sound. It doesn't have to be a drum sound, it can be any sound that's in these slots here. And then obviously then we can resample back out again or into desktop or into the Cubase project window. So it's really powerful. Right, let's have a listen. Without the resynth. With the resynth. So now I can choose to mix that with the original layer, the original untreated layer to give me a better sound on the rides. And then I can choose to maybe add some more width to the untreated one. And a bit more level. A bit more distortion. So 
So I might want to add a bit more of the original with these two processed ones because they work quite well together. So I'm going to add a third layer just to add more of the original ride with these two treated ones. So alternate, back down. I'm going to turn the filter off and then we can see our original sound comes back. Clear the solos. And that's kind of more like the original sound we wanted. Now we've got three and here's how they all sound together. And there we go, that's really, you know, there's, there's your own fat custom rise that you can then, again, re-import, save. And we even have the option and the abilities to export with samples. So we can actually say, for sound design purposes, I'm going to have this custom kit saved with the samples to share with other producers or to import to maybe a, a PC to a Mac or different projects or different studios. We can batch export really in-depth saving capabilities. So let's listen to everything else in context with this track. And there you have it, drum and bass in Backbone. So there you go, I hope you found that useful. That was Backbone. As you can see, it's there's so much in there. We've only just touched the surface. It's up to you guys where you go with this. Many options. The fact you can actually create your own custom kits, you can tag them, you can resample them. It's limitless options. So I'm going to say happy beat making and until next time, peace.